What do you do when you don't have enough bone to place a dental implant? Well, the answer is simple. You have to grow the bone. That's it. Now, you could always go with another type of prosthodontic solution, like a bridge, if that's an option. But in the world of implants, the, the, the obvious answer is you need to grow bone. And I've been growing bone for quite a long time, a number of years, and I will give you my perspective on this. And first of all, I will say that the, the necessity to grow bone in today's environment is extremely low. It, it's extremely low. It's probably maybe less than 5% of my cases do I need to grow bone, all right? Now, it didn't seem that way when we first started 20 years ago. Because uh, all the courses were like, go to these GBR courses, learn how to grow bone, posterior mandible, and the anterior, the sinus grafts and sinus bumps, and they were just the hottest topics. And so, in, in, and initially, that really was the case because we were doing an anatomical approach. And an anatomical approach was we were look, we say, well, it doesn't look like there's enough bone. Mrs. Smith, we're going to have to grow some bone. We grow some bone, we let it heal, and we come back and place the implant. Okay. Now, we do a pros driven protocol. And what the pros driven protocol typically shows us is that if you put the implant in the ideal location underneath your proposed crown, there's bone there almost in every case, almost in every case, like literally 95% of the case. So I probably only do one or two sinus grafts a year now. It's extremely rare, especially with the advent of the new, the new short implants, right? So these new short implants that are in the six and seven and a half millimeter range allow us to put implants where we couldn't go before, subantral for instance, or above an atrophic mandible where we're sitting on top of a nerve. Now we got a short implant that oftentimes fits. And so that works really, really well. So when we talk about growing bone today, I would give you my perspective. Now, this is my perspective, and I think that many people will have the same perspective over time. I think our particulate graph material isn't as good as we want it to be. And the reason I think that is that initially we were told years ago that when you graft with like a, a mineralized content, that eventually that mineralized content would be uh, turned over into natural bone. But we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. What we're seeing is that if somebody places a, a mineralized content, whether that's a, an allograft or whether that's a xenograft, that you can see that xenograft or that allograft years and years and years later. And what that means is that let's say you put the, the particulate in and you form bone around it. Well, let's say you've got 60% bone and 40% particulate. Well, you've just decreased your bone to implant contact by 40% because you've got just particulate there, which is just a space filler. Okay, so think of a chocolate chip cookie with walnuts in it, right? So the walnuts are just taking up space, right? Nobody wants walnuts in their chocolate chips. They get in the way. You want more chocolate, right? So you want more natural bone around your implant, and, and that doesn't happen with our graft materials. So I've grown very, very uh, cautious going into sites that have been previously, especially with socket grafting. People go into sites, they do a socket graft, and it heals, and then they go to place the implant, and they have a failure afterwards. I see a, a, a high incidence of failures in grafted locations. And you say, why? Well, you're starting off behind the eight ball. Imagine you're starting a race, and you're 40% behind when you start the race. That's what's happening when we go into a grafted location that has particulate in there that's just always going to be just a space filler. It's not turning over. So my, uh, my thinking and my premise going forward in the next few years is that I'm going to do a lot more autographs, okay? So autographs have always, always been the gold standard of grafting. And, and Craig Mish talks about this a lot. The gold standard of grafting is an autograft. Take some bone from somewhere in the mouth and transplant it, okay? Now, we do this all the time with our all and X cases because we're already flapping the ridge. We've got access to all the bone, so it's very easy to move bone around for all and X. For single teeth, it's a little bit more complicated because you don't have great access to volumes of bone around that surgical site unless they have exostosis and, uh, and tori and such. In those cases, they have a beautiful bone bank that you can harvest, and an easy way to do that is to use a bone scraper because you can go in and scrape that really compact D1 bone, which is really hard. It doesn't have a lot of blood supply, so you don't want to take a big chunk of it because it's going to be an, an inanimate object. What you want to do is use a bone scraper and scrape across the top and take little shavings of D1 bone, compact bone, and use that for your particulate, and it works really well. And so what I'm trying to do, especially in the aesthetic zone, is to do more autographs 
because I get a better outcome. Because that bone has osteoinductive and osteoconductive properties. It has everything it needs to grow the person's bone. It's programmed to grow its own bone. That's what it's there for. And you get that with nothing else, right? You don't get that with any bottle bone. It doesn't have all the growth factors, okay? So it might be conductive, but it's not inductive, telling it doesn't have the, the signaling molecules to tell the body, you need to grow bone here, okay? So by doing that, after those patients heal, I'm, I'm seeing a great outcome going into those sites for implants later. Those work really well. Now, what do you do if you inherit a case that has been grafted and it's only been three or four months, the patient's healed and they were told in three or four months you can go into this site and, and place an implant. My suggestion at this time in, 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 in the industry is to wait. And what I found is, is that with these autog- with these allografts that are done and the bone particulate goes in like a cortical, like a mineral loss, cortical concellus chips, they go into the site and they get it in there. I let it heal longer. And what I'm looking at now is I'm looking at a, at a minimum of about seven months of healing because the 60% bone and the 40% filler, I need that 60% bone to be more mineralized, more mature, turned over a little bit. So it's not just woven bone, it starts to turn into lamella bone, okay? So that's my, that's my go-to now is on grafted sites, I'm suggesting we wait a little bit longer. One more thing about the grafted sites, guys. If you are doing socket grafting and you're good at extractions, there's a, a possibility for a complication. And let me explain. When you take out a tooth and you do it very easily, usually the socket doesn't bleed very much. The, the lamina dura inside the socket is so hard and dense that it, you take it out and you can see all the way to the bottom. You can see the form of the roots and everything. Right? There's no bleeding or anything. That's a danger. That is a big, big time danger because bleeding is the first step to healing. And if you don't get a good amount of blood flowing in around your graft, you're, go- you're not going to have a great outcome. So what I would tell you guys is that, especially folks that are really good at extraction, when you take that out and, there's, and the socket is just pristine and white, you got to get it to bleed. And the best way to do that is with a serrated curette. So if you have a serrated curette, Hugh Freedy cell is a really nice one. Go in there and just really aggressively scrape the walls. You have to get in there and make sure you got out all the infection anyways. So use a serrated curette. Don't use a regular curette because we all know what a regular curette is. Regular curette is, is like, I just want to retire using one of those things. Because every time you hit granulation tissue with a, with a regular curette, the, the granulation goes to the left, it goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the right. And never, you never get it, do you? So you want something with like a rake, like a serrated curette that goes in there and grabs that granulation tissue and gets it out. But after you get that out and then you use copious irrigation, you get all that going, then follow that up and be very, very fast and efficient with this, okay? Okay, so you want to get this graft in within two minutes of the extraction. Two minutes of the extraction. And the reason is, is that you're going to form your initial platelet plug in two minutes, Okay. And so what you want to do is you want the platelet plug to capture the bone graft. So you want to be very efficient. Don't, don't say, okay, we got the tooth out. Now open up the package. Now hydrate the package. Oh, you didn't have the package in the room. Go get the package, bring the package in. By that time, the, the site's already filled up with a clot. So the first thing you have to do when you finally get your bone graft is to use your suction and pull the clot out. Well, a lot of times when you pull that initial clot out, it doesn't initiate bleeding again. Not in, not in the way that it did initially because it's already, sh- it's already slowed down. So what you want to do is you want to get in there, rinse it, scratch it, irritate it really well, and then get your bone particles in there. Okay, get your implant or your bone particles depending on what you're doing. If you're doing a gap graft, get your implant in and then put your bone particles around it right away. Or if you're just doing a socket grafting, go ahead and get that, that graft material in there right away. And you'll get better outcomes, better outcomes. Guys, if you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe. If you have any comments, put them below so we can answer them. And if you have any ideas for future videos, we'd love to hear from you.